So I have a question for you. If I have a rotational inertia of a certain amount, and that rotational inertia decreases, like all of a sudden the object is spinning, and then the rotational inertia of the object decreases, according to this equation, if the, if the angular momentum initial must equal the angular momentum final, and if from here to here this number goes down, what must happen to this value? Go ahead, Katie. Stay seated for us. It goes up. It goes up. Hmm. Which means, therefore, it spins faster. I need a volunteer. Someone who's not afraid to potentially get sick. Anybody? Uh, yeah, let's go with Noah. Come on around here. Okay. Noah, I've got a little platform here. Okay? I want you to stand on that platform. Okay. This platform creates a low friction environment so that I could very easily <laughs> spin Noah. You doing all right? Okay. Now, Noah, okay, you lift weights at all? Yeah. Okay, he does. Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right. <laughs> Take this kilogram weight. Take this kilogram weight, one in each hand. All right. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to extend those out as far as you can. So your whole wingspan there. Okay, very nice. All right, now I'm going to spin you. Now, as I spin you, this is what I want you to do. When I tell you to, I want you to pull your arms in close to your chest. Okay? Slowly or right, right away. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I think so. You think so? <laughs> All right, we'll see. Oh, oh stay on there. You got to have your balance. Okay, now pull them in. Out. All right. Did you see what happened? What happened when he pulled his arms in? What happened when he pulled his arms in? Students watching? And here in the classroom, what happened to his rotation? It increased. Yes, his omega, his angular velocity increased. You want to do it again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pull in. There you go. So notice what happened. What happened between point one and point two? The only thing that happened was this. His rotational inertia decreased. Okay, spread your arms back out again. You don't have to stay on the platform. Just spread them out. Notice he's got 2.2 pounds, okay, so a kilogram in either hand over here. So he's got 2.2 pounds over here, 2.2 pounds over here. And so therefore, he's got a very large distribution. What's your arm like, 36, 37? I have no idea. He has no idea. Do you wear dress shirts? Uh, yes. Uh, 32. 32. Okay, there you go. 32. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, never mind. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Noah's a great kid. All right, so... With that said, you've got 32 inches one way. So you think about it, forget his torso for just a moment. If we just put his arms end to end, that's 64 inches away from the axis of rotation, right? Not, I mean, this is probably 18, 20 inches here. So we're talking about maybe 80 inches or so um, from the axis of rotation, or that could be from the axis of rotation, 40 when you divide it in half. So with that being said, he has all this weight distributed out here, and then all of a sudden he brings it as close as possible to the axis of rotation. So his rotational inertia, his resistance to rotation, decreased. When that happened, his angular velocity had to increase. Why? Because conservation of momentum. Thank you very much, Noah. Great job with that. Thank you. Um, and you're not dizzy, are you? Okay, good. Good. <laughs>